Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Sockbot and today we're going to be talking about some little big planet for the first time in quite a while. Now, I've steered clear of a lot of what's going on with little big planet and the servers being down. Not so much because I don't care. I mean, I've been missing my online services and new games every single day that it's been down because I haven't been able to play one of my favorite games ever in like almost three or four months now, and that's very frustrating, but the reason that I haven't talked about it on this channel is because I've just kind of tried to focus on making content about other things, namely dreams, so that we can kind of see what happens with these servers. Honestly, it's made me a little bit emotional, and I think that one of the reasons I'm avoiding it is I'm just hoping that when the servers come back, which I believe they are still down um, for my personal testing, then we can all actually celebrate because, uh, well, they sort of kind of come back like four times now, but regardless, today I wanted to use that as an excuse to replay and talk about a bunch of my old levels from Little Big Planet, namely a handful of ones that I made in Little Big Planet 1 and 2, because a lot of the ones that I made in 3 I already had this channel for and have talked about on here. So if you're interested in that, feel free to stick around and feel free to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more Little Big Planet or if you just like talking about creative video games in general. But uh, yeah, also tomorrow is my birthday, um, otherwise known as today if you're watching this on the 26th. So happy birthday, Sockpot, uh, I, I guess, but not the birthday of this channel, but the birthday of me. And so well, I guess it's all about me today for that too, but uh, I think that the reason that I decided to make this video now was partially because of things being down and me wanting to show off something for fun anyway since we can't really talk about other things in Little Big Planet right now, and also as a small present to just, you know, do, do things related to me for fun. Um, that sounded not good. Anyways, let's talk about some levels. So I've done this before on this channel. I did talk about the first two levels I ever made, but this I believe is, is gotta be like number three or four. I can't remember exactly. Um, I could check on the servers and see when I posted it, but honestly, I posted a lot of these way later than I made them. So this one is actually, oh, there's a motorcycle outside. Well, hopefully you can still hear me, but sorry about that. This one is called Maggie's Mansion. Um, the naming for this was completely based off of my sister who played it with me and play tested it with me at the time, uh, my older sister, and uh, she said, well, why don't you name it after me when I was trying to figure out how to name it, and I was like, okay. Um, and the goal for this one was to kind of create a mansion, uh, but sort of like with different rooms and, and different areas uh, themed after different materials to try to use a lot of materials that I've been wanting to use for a while um, and to create something that was inside for the first time. This is, I believe, the first game I ever made in Little Big Planet that was supposed to take place in a specific area and also to kind of uh, test the moving in and out of the inside and inside. So you'll notice that there's a lot of different textures going on. It's a little messy. Mind, I did make this in 2000. 2009, so it's not super surprising, um, and you can tell I still can't beat my own videos, but like this was the first level that I had a bonus area there with the room on the left with a checker pattern. It's the first one where I created some of my own creatures, the ghost there, um, and I believe it was still in the trend where I tried to put a race in every single level because my friends really like races or something for, uh, I don't really know. But also, as you can see by the explosion of the graveyard here, um, I still like to mess with people in my levels. And you'll see that in a lot of my early levels, I've kind of redid some of them to, you know, make them more accessible to other people and less related to just playing them with my specific friends in person. But I still included at this point a lot of things that were like, I'm gonna make this and put this in here just to mess around with friends and, and different challenges um, and kind of traps just to, to screw with them. And I think that that's something that is really fun in these games and something that I think a lot of people that create games don't really think about. Um, I know that a lot of you out there don't have friends that'll play the, these games with you and I think that, uh, well, for one, definitely ask around because more people are gonna be interested in playing stuff you make than you think they will be. And even if they're not like, super sweet and giving you all these compliments. Very rarely did I ever have any friend insult me for my levels, other than to tell me they were too hard, which was partially due to lack of playtesting and partially because they were the playtesters. But yeah, here I have another secret area, um, and then it's just the end of the level. It's very simple and very, like, tiny idea, I guess, that I turned into uh, a pretty short level, but I've also beaten it like 10 times. Um, and as you could probably tell there, there's a handful of places there where you probably could get stuck. Um, and I, I had my friend Kyle for that. So Kyle, if you're watching, hi Kyle, um, who was my play tester uh, for the majority of my, my games. And um, 
well, gosh knows he did a great job of using all our lives and getting stuck in that one. And that is actually a really good playtester, if that's what they're doing, because uh, that means they're finding all the glitches in your levels, which is what you're hoping for when you have a playtester. Um, but moving on to the next one, I wanted to talk a little bit about, a, I think we're going to Under, yeah, Undercity. So this is a level that I have actually made a video on before. I've talked about it before, but I never posted that video. And I couldn't tell you why, um, but yeah, there you can see right at the start, I tried to kind of edit it to show you guys the, the background to this, because I thought it was finally interesting and, and, and detailed enough uh, to show people around, but didn't really work. So obviously Undercity, it is named after the Forsaken City um, of the Undead, and that is from World of Warcraft, but for this one particularly, there's no uh, relation other than that. Um, but I knew I wanted to name it that from the beginning. I think I just called it that because it sounded cool. And uh, it's still, you could tell, just the paint splatter for the for the icon for it. And I don't know why I'm talking so much about that, but that just, to me, feels very iconic. Anyways, at the beginning there, you can kind of see something that I would later go back to in the in the level I made called Towers, which I've talked about on this channel in Little Big Planet 3, where I liked the idea of jumping across these different buildings, and these city materials from when they were introduced in Little Big Planet 1, I was just obsessed with. I loved them, I thought they were so cool, but this is definitely one of my better designed levels from that same early Little Big Planet time. I believe this actually came right after I made Maggie's Mansion, but I may have made one other one first that we'll talk about last. Um, it's hard for me to remember at this point. Um, but here you can tell there's a few traps there. Again, friend traps just for, you know, messing with people. Um, and I ended up adding a lot of extra different checkpoints in this because, uh, well, I think my friends were getting tired of failing it. And I even added my first two-player mode here, so I wasn't able to show that off because I just didn't have another person with me to, to film that, but it was a very simple two-player challenge, but it definitely was the first one that I did. And again, you can see here, the reason that I like show my old stuff is because I'm able to say, oh wow, there's a lot of places here you can get stuck, like that permanent switch there that drags the, uh, the little platform there over to the right. You have to just follow a platform on the bottom afterwards if you uh, screw up and die there, but especially for this, this is something, this uh, vehicle section, this is the first vehicle I ever made um, from scratch. You could tell I really liked the uh, the rockets here, but this section was, uh, well, you can see I have to like pilot this perfectly because that truck or uh, bus gets stuck everywhere. Um, and yes, people have commented that many a time. I know it does. I'll fix it at some point. But uh, here's where I finally started adding barriers to my games where you couldn't actually get outside the level. Now, I post added those to all my other games, but that's, I think, why I jumped off there, or, you know, just for fun. Uh, but this part I was actually super proud of, and you can kind of see the aesthetic here, the very blocky aesthetic. It's very grid-like. Um, I ended up using this to a much greater extent in my level cube, I think it's called cube, or the cube, uh, something like that. Um, but here, I just wanted to create something that looked very industrial. I'm obsessed with industrial, like, the visuals and aesthetics. I think they're so cool. I, like... I would live under a bridge in the city if I could because I find them so cool and, and, and fun to, to look at. But I've talked about that in a bunch of my levels. You saw that one of my first games in Dreams was actually based off of a uh, an industrial complex um, called Parking Lot. And so I'll put a link to that too. Uh, I apologize if I mention a lot of my other games in this. It's because they're irrelevant, not just because you have to go watch them. You don't, you don't have to watch them if you don't want to. But um, I think looking back at this and especially playing through it, yeah, the section here with the different um, electrical parts was like a little bit tough and a little bit rude in its difficulty but at the same time this whole section maybe it's because it's grid like and and i i didn't really have to do a lot of cleaning up but it just feels like i made this section years later even though i made it directly after the previous part um the initial part of this game so i was very impressed with myself with the amount of different materials going on or rather the amount of different uh, layers going on. There's really only one material, but that's something that I think I did surprisingly well here, in the sense that I can admit where, like, I wasn't great at certain things, but in this case, I think that I was pretty impressed going back. Is, is that okay to say? Is that sound pretentious? Well, regardless, there's a number of other reasons to insult me for this level, so feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Um, but definitely here in this one section, this is like one of the first times I actually had like a story-ish to a level. The whole point to this ending part was to get on the subway to get to the upper city. And mind, this was still when I was living in Pennsylvania, so you could tell I was obsessed with New York even back then. <laughs> but I added a subway at the bottom that you'll see at the end, but obviously 
you have to turn on the power to the subway because gameplay and here at this part i actually still really like this part i haven't really been able to replicate this section of like the very quickly rising and falling uh winches in any other kind of game on here and i would like to but i can't think of a way to do it without it being annoying or getting screwed up like it does most of the time i played this with other people you can tell here i'm swinging very carefully and grabbing onto specific parts of sponges because that's kind of what you have to do to get through the section. And again, this is all things that I created and I think were cool ideas. And I think at this point, I'm just starting to refine them uh, ever so slightly. And so that's why this entire game, especially, especially that one bus section, is actually still possible. Even if you do get stuck or mess up those different parts, you can still get through it in another way. And that was kind of my goal for this whole process. Granted, there's still moments like right there where as a piston, you have to jump onto the top where the point of this was to swing across the bottom of these, uh, these not pillars, what are they called? These beams, these copper beams. Um, and well, I guess it, it just kind of ended up that way and I never went back to it, but I'm okay with it. And so finally, you can see the only clever switch in this entire thing is that uh, uh, the sensor there, the sensor switch that is still the old Little Big Planet 1 style, uh, specifically so that people could, um, they had to spin that section without uh, screwing it up. But you can actually see another permanent switch in the bottom left corner right here of this car. Um, and one of the other reasons why this is still early, early Sockbot, uh, because you can get to the bonuses in these two cars, but, um, but well, you can't get out of them. And I never put in a way to get out other than popping, so... Should I have? Yeah. And and could I go back and add them out? It, absolutely, but uh, I still haven't. So you're going to see me struggle with this for a while. So I'm going to fast forward through this section and pretend that didn't happen. Just going to ignore that. And so finally, and this is, so I don't know if you guys remember, I'm going to pause for a second, but in Little Big Planet 3, they changed how scoreboards work. So the second that you hit a scoreboard, like the ending um, explosions and excitement before it goes to the, like, before it pauses and, uh, goes to like the score screen and like the continue or go back to pod. Um, it used to be a lot longer and I actually missed that because in multiplayer it's so much fun to swing around in the end zones to the point where in this level I created a really cool lounge specifically for that purpose to kind of reward people that got to the end, especially my friends and I as a group when we got to the end to like just have a good time uh, just messing around in the end zone. So I, I know that end zone is, is a very sports term, uh, but in this case I mean the scoreboard. We, we, we don't do sports on this channel. Unless, unless, of course, uh, it, League of Legends counts. Because that's an, that's an eSport that kind of counts, right? Anyways, we're going to move on to one more. So finally, I want to show a game that is actually a lot more recent. Because in this game, in, in this video, and, and probably in future videos like this where I talk about my old games, I like to talk about what I've done to grow and kind of what I've improved on as a game designer over the years, as an amateur game designer over the years. Um, and I think that being able to show a lot of old levels is really fun. It's fun to talk about and it's fun to, you know, bag on myself the whole time. But I want to at least be able to show something more recent that we can definitely still uh, critique, but also one that we can talk about. And so this one is La Dia de las, uh, las no, La Dia de los Ojos de la Abuela. So the or day to abuela so it's the the day of your grandmother's eyes and so the whole point here is auntie ghost pepper which was taken from uncle jalapeno her uh, his uh sister i guess we'll say uh, is asking you to run through uh, the catacombs below to find her eyes that she lost um story <laughs> so you could tell being that this was only a couple years ago, um, there's a lot more going on here in terms of story, in terms of backgrounds, in terms of different assets. But also, this was actually one of the challenges I posted on this channel, so feel free to go watch that if you want more details on this level specifically. Um, but I did still only use tools um, from Little Big Planet 1. So I created this in Little Big Planet 3 because I was I actually didn't realize the Little Big Planet 1 servers were even still up at the time. Um, kind of sad now thinking about that but you can tell the different rooms here of the catacombs are very much their own areas there's a lot of differences between each of the rooms there's very specific uh, connectors between the rooms like the little caves there and i tried to keep the aesthetic going without sticking and using only the exact same materials 
but you'll also see that there's still places here where I duplicated a lot of things, um, namely the ladders and the different skeletons that launch you, uh, just to kind of get the most out of those assets. And that's something that you'll see me talk about on this channel a lot, is definitely working and, and trying to work towards something that improves and is more complex than your previous levels, but also realizing that that experience doesn't just make you have more time. And so trying to use your time smartly still and, and make sure that you can still create the different things you want to create without getting stuck on one specific thing for hours and hours or making something completely unique for every single room. So you'll see the torches in here, a lot of the rocks and the different areas are, are made up of assets that I have used over and over, but changed enough around them and changed the rooms enough to keep them unique and to keep it feeling fresh. And I think that in this game, that is the best I've pretty much ever done at that. Um, and this is probably the third to last uh, most recent game that I made in, uh, in Little Big Planet. And um, even here, this is again, going back to uh, the one we talked about earlier with Maggie's Mansion, I had practiced a lot of different things, a lot of different areas that were inside, I practiced a lot of transitions from inside to outside. And so here, I was actually very impressed with the initial section there when you finally go outside. But then this part is just, it's one of those places where like you have an idea for a concept, so like this cavalcade of rocks that is then ex like blown up and all falls down uh, to kind of create a really fun and exciting moment, which is something I've never done in a game like this. But I think that I committed a little bit too hard to that, and it may have just been better to create an effect that looked like falling rocks uh, so that I could actually focus and create a better platforming section through those rocks that would then fall. Um, and I still love it, and there's still places you can get stuck there, so clearly I haven't gotten over that, but generally that's just a lack of playtesting for, for my personal spot. But here, this was the first level I actually made after a long time, um, and more specifically it was the first level I made using only Little Big Planet 1 assets since then, and so you can tell that here I made a little haul with the uh, different concepts for the different stages from Little Big Planet 1, which I believe were like the rewards for either acing everything or collecting all of the different uh, the different uh, objects in each one. I'm not completely sure which one it is. I believe it's all the objects. Um, but even here, there's like some glitchy elements, and I think that's because there's been an update to Little Big Planet 3 at some point, um, specifically with these uh, the launchers here and the gas that ends up killing me like four times here for no reason. I'm not sure what happened there. There's clearly still some glitchiness with Little Big Planet 3, but honestly, that kind of glitchiness was there in Little Big Planet 1 as well. So I'm gonna skip forward here until I actually finish the obstacle so you guys don't have to watch me struggle at my own levels. Unless, if you enjoy that, I'll stream again. Um, it's been a while since I've done a stream, but I'm gonna actually skip forward to where I sort of skip over the obstacle, but especially that area there, the underground area with all the vines and the lit flowers, I just thought it was so cool, and I was so proud of myself for that, because it's very simple, but I, I don't know, I just thought it was really cool. So this is moving on, me realizing at this point I was having a blast with this level. I'd always wanted to create like a tribute to the wedding um, from Little Big Planet 1, because that was my favorite series of levels from that. Um, that and the subway one, hence all the industrial levels I created. But here I was like, okay, I gotta create another portal to another level. So I was like, how can I do this? Well, let's run into Granny's casket because this is already dark and creepy as it is. So uh, at this point, you're gonna see a lot more like ghosts and uh, different creepy, like floaty things. And that's kind of the transition to what the next level in this series was. And initially I was going to make it very ghost-like um, but instead I tried to create a level in between this one and the next one, which um, I'll talk about at some point as well. I actually already have, so if you want to see that, uh, go, go check that out. But that was when the actual game came out, so uh, not as critical as this one. But I just thought it was really cool to have this ghost character that stole Granny's eyes be the final place uh, where you end up at the end and go into the scoreboard, because I've never had a scoreboard end up inside of a creature's mouth I don't think that can be taken out of context, but I'm sure if it uh, if it can be, you guys will take it out of context. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and or me chatting about some old levels I made in Little Big Planet, um, if only to uh, to just be here because it's my birthday and I wanted to talk about something fun. <laughs> But regardless, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think about these levels. Definitely feel free to be critical. I know that there are a lot of things that I probably didn't talk about in these levels um, that wasn't great, but um, it's always fun to reminisce and look back at some old creations, especially given that um, I'm able to compare them to a newer one like the one we just watched. But regardless, 
I hope the Little Big Planet servers are back up soon so I can link you guys directly to play these ones. Um, they are up on my uh, account, Sokula account on PSN, so feel free to hit me up there once they're actually open. Um, you can add me as a friend if you want to, but no pressure. Uh, and regardless, thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more. No pressure as always. My name's Sockbot. Goodbye, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.